Who's excited? Who's fired up? Who couldn't get tickets to Hamilton and had to settle for Pulse 2016? <laughs> Welcome to Pulse 2016, the biggest customer success event in the history of mankind. And by the way, real-time update, apologies for the registration line this morning, and thank you for your patience. Really excited to have you here. If this is your first Gainsight event, just to explain a little bit about that opening, one of our company values is childlike joy. Bring the inner kid in you to work every day. And we bring that to everything we do. And recently, we've gotten very enamored with our own musical ability. Some of you probably saw the customer success carpool karaoke. We had a lot of fun with it. It was me and Aaron Levy, the CEO of Box, uh, talking about software, go Box, talking about ABBA, talking about customer success. It was a lot of fun. And it really got me excited because I've always loved karaoke, but it finally gave me a wake up call why I love karaoke so much because I learned that the key to karaoke is the karaoke equation. Does anyone know the karaoke equation? Here's the karaoke equation. All that it takes to be great at karaoke is for you to have your enthusiasm massively exceed your ability. And what's great about that is that's actually Nick Maida's personal CEO equation as well. So we had a lot of fun with that video. It actually ended up getting 10,000 views on YouTube. Really, really great, which actually is a lot for a B2B video. And generally positive feedback, uh, just a couple haters. <laughs> but we're a super competitive bunch of Gainsight, and apparently there's some singer called Adele that has the number one carpool karaoke video on YouTube. And so one day we're gonna catch Adele. Adele's a little ahead at 100 million views. We're 10,000, 2,500 years from now on this stage, we will surpass Adele. So getting to this topic of the conference, you might have seen on the agenda, this morning is called Customer Success is Eating the World. What the heck is that about? Well, there's a great blog post five years ago by Mark Andreessen, famous venture capitalist, all about the idea that software is eating the world. Every business, whether you're a healthcare company, a financial services company, an education company, every business is becoming a software business because software is the differentiator in most businesses. But if you've been coming to Pulse for a while, you know that if you're a software company, the core to what you do is not building a product, it's delivering an outcome, it's delivering success. And so we think every company is gonna become a software company and customer success is eating the world. And that's what we're gonna talk about this morning. If you look online, there's a great article in Harvard Business Review by a very famous professor, Michael Porter, and the CEO of a company called PTC, which some of the folks are here in the audience, and they wrote this great article, which Gainsight had nothing to do with, but although we loved it, all about how as manufacturing companies embed sensors in their devices so they can track what you're doing, they fundamentally transform the nature of their company. They're no longer a product company. They're a connected company. And in this article, they say that if you're going to be a connected company, one of the things you need to do is build a customer success team. And that's not just theory. Many of you have been coming to Pulse for years, and you might be SaaS companies, a lot of SaaS companies in the audience, but if you look around, you'll find big enterprise infrastructure companies, business services companies, consumer su services, beloved brands, all building customer success into what they do. And if you go back to that carpool karaoke video, Aaron and I were talking back and forth. At the very end, he starts talking about this class he does at Stanford Business School. He, on the side from running this massive company, he teaches about disruption at Stanford Business School. And I said, what happens to those companies that don't embrace this change, that don't believe software is eating the world, and then don't believe in customer success? And he said, those companies won't exist in one and a half to two years. And you can see by the expression on my face, I was actually pretty surprised. But you know, the reality is whether it's at one and a half or two years or five years from now, we know as, as a Pulse community that customer success has gone from a great idea to something that's inevitable. And let's talk about that community. I'm gonna turn it back to my colleague, Dan Steinman. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Nick. <clears throat> For those who didn't hear my answer to Nick's earlier question, I'm fired up! Woo! Let's do this. Welcome to Pulse. As Nick said, the biggest customer success gathering in history. Uh, and in fact, we'll have breakout sessions today that are bigger than any other non-Pulse event in the history of customer success. Like every year, we talk about Pulse and we talk about our thought leadership. Uh, I'm officially on PTO for the next three days because for these three days, I don't work for Gainsight. I'm working for you and with you as a community of customer success people. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I hope you have a great three days. Pulse is 
uh, synonymous with the, growth of, with the growth of customer success. And you can see by the attendance over the last uh, four pulses, three years, we've grown more than 10x since we started this thing in 2013. The other thing that's really interesting is that the reason or the theme behind each conference has changed, not necessarily uh, by our intention, uh, but because uh, it just was. So 2013, it was all about what the heck is this thing called customer success? In 2014, it evolved to why. Why are we doing it? What's the value of that? In, and last year, it was more about how. Lots of how-to sessions. How do you do health scoring? How do you do quarterly business reviews, et cetera? And this year is really interesting. It's evolved to the question of who. This is about how, who does customer success affect? And how's, how does it affect all of the other organizations in your company? And we have a, a bunch of sessions on that later. But it's really interesting just to see how the theme of uh, Pulse has evolved over the last four years. So speaking of the last four years, here's the four pins. I claim every year that these are going to be collector's items, and we're getting there. Uh, so just as a little exercise to get your blood flowing, I want everybody to stand up because you're here at 2016 Pulse. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Love it. Excitement here. Awesome. Okay. Now, stay standing if you were here a year ago. Pulse 2015. Okay, now stay standing if you were here two years ago at Pulse 2014. And one last time, stay standing if you were at the very first Pulse. Yeah. All right, let's hear it for those people. That is awesome. By the way, uh, you can be seated. By the way, there's a business opportunity waiting for one of you entrepreneurs, and that is to build a little display case. I would prefer a briefcase. Uh, so I could put my pulse pins in it and then show anybody any time that I've been to all of the pulses. <clears throat> Thank you guys from the Silicon Valley and San Francisco area who made your way across the bridge to Oakland. And thank you from everyone who came around the world uh, who arrived here in Silicon Valley East. And we're really excited about this partnership with Oakland. They have totally embraced us. Uh, they are looking at their community the same way we look at ours, which is this growing, vibrant kind of rebirth in a way, uh, and we're really excited to partner with them, and we hope that this is a long-lasting relationship with Oakland and the way they've treated us and the city of Oakland has embraced us, and we are happy to return that embrace. So thank all of you guys for coming. This is going to be really cool. And so welcome from all over the world. Uh, I don't know who came the furthest, but there are some people I know that I talked to yesterday that were literally traveling for 24 hours to get here. So super exciting to see where everybody has come from from around the world. And in particular, uh, the map of the United States shows that there's people from virtually every single state. Now, particularly embarrassing to me, if you know your geography, the one state that has no blue on it is my home state of North Dakota. <laughs> so I have a personal mission in the next year to travel to Fargo, see if I can find a couple of farmers who will come to Pulse next year. <laughs> I uh, really want to welcome and thank those who brought their teams. We are really intent on making Pulse the place that you do your customer success offsites. Uh, and that is happening this year. 15% of the companies represented in the room uh, have brought more than five people, and in many cases, large teams. Cisco has a really big team. MindBody has a big team. There's a whole bunch of folks who brought their teams. And we want all of you to think about that uh, over the next few years. Think about making Pulse your customer success offsite event for the year. And we'll help you make it really great, give you conference rooms, we'll help you do team building and skills building stuff, some of that which is happening today. Also want to welcome all of those, more than a thousand people who have graduated from our customer success university. We announced it two years ago at Pulse. So raise your hand if you graduated from Pulse or from customer success university. Uh, that includes 100 people that we did yesterday in a live session, a live nine-hour session of customer success stuff, which was exhausting but really fun, and everyone stayed awake the whole day, so that was very cool. By the way, we wrote a book. I don't know if anyone <laughs> knew that. And when I say we wrote a book, I actually mean that we wrote a book because it may be our names on the author line, but it really is a contribution of this entire community that went into the book. Specifically, some of the chapters of the 10 laws were written by individuals who are sitting uh, in this auditorium today. But also the rest of it, we put, the, we put the letters on the paper, but the rest of it really came out of all of our experience in talking to all of you and the people in the community. So 
you all wrote a book. And if you want to put your name on it, take the cover and write your name on the bottom of it, we're, we're just fine with that. Uh, unbelievable lineup of speakers uh, over the next few days. In fact, we almost have as many speakers, over 250 speakers at this event than we had at the very first Pulse in total. Uh, so really great lineup, people that you're going to love listening to, CEOs, investors, lots of VPs of customer success. People are actually doing this. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you to our sponsors. You can't do a great conference without great sponsors. Ask all of you guys to make sure you stop at the booths, pick up the tchotchkes so they don't have to take them back home and store them in the closet. Um, our, our key sponsors, uh, I just want to point out our, our premium sponsors, Accenture, uh, TSIA, UserZoom, and Zendesk. And then the Pulse Agenda, it's complex. There's a lot of stuff going on. So let me just give you a couple of minutes of a guide here. This morning, we're talking about customer success eating the world. There'll be a number of sessions that'll be really great. This afternoon, we're going to ask you guys to break out into functional summits. And what we mean by that is there's a, there's a summit that is all about customer success for Fortune 500 companies. There's another one for startup CEOs. There's another one for finance people and CFOs and on through product and services, et cetera. So there's a summit kind of for every discipline in the organization. For those of you who are CSMs, look at your agenda. You'll find some sessions in each of those summits that'll be really interesting. And then come back at the end of the day because we're having a CEO panel and you all need to know what your CEOs are thinking about uh, and we'll have a conversation with them about how they think about customer success. Throughout the three days, there'll be some what we call showcases. That is Gainsight customers going deep on how they're doing customer success and using Gainsight. Wednesday, first thing in the morning, one of our most popular sessions every year is what is the VC community, the investors thinking about customer success, especially relevant with this little mini downturn that we've had. So be, be here first thing tomorrow. And then based on some feedback we got last year, the desire to go deeper on some of these topics. And we'll be doing that with some deep dives on some of the topics. And at the end of the day to, uh, tomorrow, We'll be talking about customer success as a career and why it is the new pathway to the CEO office. And then on Thursday morning, a session to help you guys get ready if you're thinking about implementing some kind of technology to help you drive customer success. Uh, and then skill development, I mentioned earlier for the customer success people in the room and all of you, uh, some skill development sessions on how to negotiate and how to write great emails and how to do PowerPoint and things like that. And then. A separate event, but because everyone's here together, we do our customer conference this week as well. We call it Customer 360, so that'll be going on on Thursday as well. So figure out your agenda. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, but there's a session for everybody every single hour. Uh, so figure it out and enjoy it. So quick checklist of things that you need to do or need to know about. Number one, download the app. If you don't, your conference experience won't be as good. And you have my permission to do that while I'm talking. So do it right now if you haven't done it. Do tweet, tweet, Twitter. Do tweets on Twitter. That's what I meant to say. Uh, let's get some social media buzz going around customer success. That line keeps growing too, so let's make it happen today. We always get asked, you know, am I, am I going to get the slides for all the sessions? The answer to that is they're already available on this particular URL. Not only the slides, but we're going to have an official professional note taker in every session taking notes and scribing and we're going to put those notes up as well. If you're looking for help, look for orange shirts. There are people with orange pulse t-shirts so if you need help find one of them they'll show you where to go. And then last but not least if you need help and you want to do it the lazy way get out your phone and text to this particular number and help will be on the way. Now stay around for sure for the last session today because we're going to give away two tickets Anybody heard of the Golden State Warriors? Yeah? Yeah, two tickets to the closing game Wednesday night against the Portland Trailblazers. <laughs> and if somebody wins these tickets and can't go or doesn't care, please come and find me. This is what I look like. I'll, I'll find somebody who wants them. Speaking of the Warriors, just coincidentally, we are actually in the building that houses their offices. They're a couple of stories up. And their practice facility. So it's pretty cool. We're sharing our location this week with the world champion warriors. But this leads me to a request. This is a personal request from me. This isn't have anything to do with Gainsight or Pulse. I need you guys to take this seriously. Please, please, if you see this guy in the hallway, do not bump into him. <laughs> okay? 
And by the way, on behalf of the whole Bay Area, welcome back, Steph. So a little bit of breaking news. Um, we're doing something that we've been kind of doing informally for a couple years now, and that is we are officially moving all of our thought leadership, our non-Gainsight product-specific stuff, to the brand called Pulse. So Pulse has become, is going to become a bigger brand. Most of you know Pulse is this conference and maybe Pulse local meetups, but we're taking that to the next level and saying it's really a separate brand and all of our thought leadership, like writing books and uh, e-books and blogs and all of those kinds of things are gonna come under the Pulse brand going forward. It's something that's actually been happening, but we're kind of formalizing it today. And that's gonna include a growing network of consulting partners who are doing work for prospects and customers in the arena of customer success. So you'll see that grow and evolve over the next uh, several weeks and months. And then last but not least, one of our missions is actually to give Pulse back to you. Pulse is the community of customer success people. It's all the people in this room and lots of others. And we want you to help us drive the Pulse brand in the right direction. So we've created something we call the Pulse Council and I will be handpicking some of the people in this audience and others to join me on the Pulse Council, which is essentially going to be our advisory board for what do we do with Pulse? What are the right certification programs? What's the right content for next year's uh, Pulse Conference? What should Pulse Local Meetup look like? Those kinds of things. And we need your help. So those of you I'll thank in advance who are going to participate in that. And we'll revolve that so that other people will get a chance to participate as well. But we're really excited about you guys being part of the advisory board to drive the Pulse brand forward. Last but not least, the annual and ceremonial customer success fist bump. So find someone near you and give them a fist bump. Welcome to customer success, or we're glad you're here. And we really are glad you're here. Thank you guys so much for coming. And with that, I'll leave Pulse and thought leadership behind for a second. And I'm really happy to introduce to everybody our VP of Customer Success at Gainsight, Allison Pickens, who's going to take that thought leadership and drive it down to rolling up your sleeves and getting actual things done with customers. So, Allison? The bare necessity of Mother Nature's recipe that brings the bare necessities of life wherever I want to <laughs> Amazing. I'd like to walk to work every day with a panther. <laughs> Sounds awesome. All right, guys, great to be here today. I hope all you guys can see me with the smoke. I'll move over here. <laughs> um, so every year at Pulse, we like to talk about the top trends in customer success at that moment. And for those of you who were at Pulse last year, you might remember Nick, uh, dressed as a chef <laughs> in this photo anyway, um, presented the top five ingredients in a customer success recipe that people were focusing on. Um, so last year, those were tier your customers intelligently, hire a one-to-many communications leader, Hire a customer success operations leader. Expand your talent pool to backgrounds beyond traditional customer success. And drive sales. So that was last year. This year I'm going to talk to you about what are the new trends that we're seeing. And you know, we talk to hundreds of people all year long. We try to see what bubbles up. So this year we've got a few. Driving value for your customers is more important than driving adoption. It's important to demonstrate the ROI of your customer success efforts internally. Drive new sales. This is actually a repeat from last year. I think we still have some room to, to grow in this area. And finally, align your company around your customers. So I'm going to dive into each of these. Trend number one, value is more important than adoption. So you know, I think we can all agree that the most important thing in driving customer longevity is making sure that you're actually fulfilling your customer's objectives. Customers don't buy your product because they want to log in every day. They buy your product or service because they actually want to get value from it. Now, um, it's not just up to customer success to drive value for your customers. Actually, it's a cross-functional effort. It starts with sales. So we need sales, first of all, to discover our clients' business objectives. We need services to actually deliver against those objectives during onboarding. And we need our customer success team to drive change at our clients in order to demonstrate ROI. So this is a cross-functional effort. And at Gainsight, uh, we take this so seriously, we actually created a framework last year that we call V3D. It stands for Value, Discover, Deliver, and Demonstrate. And it gets our entire company 
aligned around what are the common business objectives that our customers face, and let's make sure that end-to-end -end across the life cycle, we're delivering against those objectives. If you'd like to learn more about how to drive value, not just focus on adoption, we have a ton of sessions about this at Pulse, so I encourage you to look at the agenda and check them out. Trend number two, demonstrate ROI internally of our customer success efforts. Making customers happy sounds great, but what's the financial return on actually investing in customer success? Your CEOs might be wondering, um, where's the meat in customer success, right? So when I talk to a lot of you guys about, you know, what, what, are, how, what are the ways in which we actually demonstrate the ROI of our team, we often talk about the financial metrics. We talk about the impact that we have on gross retention, for example. But I think we can all agree that actually gross retention is a lagging indicator of whether we're actually making progress on a daily basis. In fact, the innovations that we might introduce today may not really affect renewals until a year from now, right? Like the, ne the next set of renewals. So, so lagging outcomes aren't enough to talk about. But we also can't just focus on the activities we're doing on a daily basis, like resolving risk or conducting training sessions, doing executive business reviews, because senior executives don't really care about the calls that are logged. So we need a near-term metric, um, but that's still meaningful. And that's really where leading indicators come into play. So um, some of the most innovative customer success teams that I'm talking to um, are focusing on those intermediate operational metrics that we can make progress against on a day-to-day -day or, or monthly basis, but that also means something um, to our board and, and to our executive team. At Gainsight this past year, we introduced a notion of an adoption currency that's correlated with driving value for our customers and also with those longer-term financial metrics like gross retention. And we actually report this metric to our board every quarter. We just had a board meeting last week, actually, and, and we reported against that. If you'd like to learn more about demonstrating the ROI internally of your customer success team, um, check out a lot of the sessions we have. Um, there's a session on Thursday and, and a, couple, a couple others. OK. Trend number three, drive new business. Now, a lot of the times, we, as customer success leaders, we talk about managing risk, getting ahead of the renewal. But I'm finding that um, the strongest customer success teams align themselves with their sales teams. They're moving beyond the like, typical tension that we see between customer success and sales, and they're showing that actually they can drive new business. Now, there are a few ways in which customer success teams can drive new sales. The first is through expansion upsell, right? That's new ARR, I think we all know that. Some customer success teams are responsible for it. Some of them uh, contribute leads to the sales team for upsell. But CSM teams can also make your customers extremely referenceable so that they can talk to prospects about the really positive experience they've had. CSMs also are critical in helping to define new use cases for your product, which um, can be codified in the form of case studies that open up new markets for you. Fourth, customer success teams um, can generate advocates among your customers, uh, propelling word of mouth about your product that lowers your acquisition costs. And finally, um, among the most, the most innovative customer success teams are actually differentiating their company in the sales cycle uh, by allowing account executives to actually talk about how amazing the customer experience is. Because your customers, don't, or your, your prospects, don't just want to know about the roadmap for your product. They want to know about the journey map for your onboarding. They want to know what's going to happen after that deal. So these five things sum up to all of the ways in which customer success teams can actually drive new business. And um, actually at Gainsight, we take this so seriously that um, we instituted a target um, for our customer success team to drive references, case studies, um, and other forms of advocacy. We consider it to be a fundamental part of the ROI for our team. If you'd like to learn more about how you can ally yourself with sales, we actually have um, a number, of, like a whole track on how you can work better with your VP of sales. You should definitely check it out. Finally, trend number four, align your company around your customers. Um, talk to many of you guys, and I, I think a lot of us agree that customer success isn't just a function, it's a company imperative. And um, we all need to get um, our departments aligned around the customer at the center of our company. We need sales, for example, not just to close new deals, but also to set up our customers for success. We need services not just to aim for a gross margin target, but to drive fast time to value and onboarding. 
And we need our support team not just to close tickets, but rather to thoughtfully prioritize how they approach them. And there are other equally important imperatives for other departments as well. Uh, we have a number of sessions on this topic too. Um, actually, we have many summits for each of these functions at Pulse, so definitely check them out this week. Just to wrap up, here are the four trends um, this year. Definitely encourage you guys to come find me at Pulse, and I'm really looking forward to talking with you about many of these. So with that, I'll hand things back to Nick. Great, great job, Allison. Thank you so much. Awesome. So just to, just to take us home, I want to talk a little bit about what we hope you get out of Pulse in the next few days. And at Gainsight, we take Pulse very, very seriously. It's actually the most important thing we do every year. You've invested almost a whole week of your time in spending time with us. We want to deliver a great experience that makes you better and hopefully is magical in a lot of ways. We will make mistakes from time to time. And again, apologies for the registration line. By the way, as a little public service announcement, you can get your badges if you haven't already gotten them before lunchtime so you have your vouchers for lunch. Um, but we really do take it seriously. And every year we survey you afterwards and hopefully you'll fill out our survey this year. Last year, we surveyed all of you. We got actually several hundred responses and a 45 NPS, but we know we can do better this year. What we heard last year from you, if you were at Pulse 2015 was, number one, it was cold because it was actually outdoors. So this year we're indoors, um, that's one thing. Number two, you really wanted more actionable content. There were great speakers, but some folks were a little bit more high level talking about the importance of customer success the strategy, but a lot of you are like, what do I do next? So we're gonna talk about that. And then number three, I think one of the biggest values always at Pulse is the serendipitous networking. Bumping into people that you know or you don't know at cocktail hours, at lunchtime, that's awesome. But some of you have said, I wanna meet specific people. I wanna meet people that are great at customer success ops. I wanna people, meet people that know one to many. And we've created something to help with that. So we take Pulse very, very, very seriously. We do treat it like our wedding uh, every year. Um, and it's and actually personally reviewed every session, every PowerPoint presentation, every speaker. It's, it, ma it matters to everyone here. And for us, the goal is at the end of this week, hopefully it's more of a royal wedding and less of a red wedding from Game of Thrones. You can judge us at the very end. A few things I'm hoping you'll take away. Number one, we've told the speakers create content that get, gets people's phones out. Not because they're bored, but because they have to take a picture of that content because it's so valuable. I saw some of you taking pictures of Allison's content, which is exactly what I'm talking about. I want content that's so actionable, so detail-oriented that you can go back and, 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 and kind of make it happen in your company. Really important. Number two, we tried to create this uh, forum for targeted networking. So in addition to the serendipity of bumping into people that you know, how do we create targeted networking to meet people that know something that you need to know? So if you haven't already, get your Pulse pins. These pins advertise what you know about. Maybe you're great at the ROI of customer success. Maybe you've figured out one to many. Somebody else is looking to learn from you. And so we basically created this way that if you see somebody with a badge and you wanna learn about that topic, go up to that person and talk to them about that. It's a little bit intimidating sometimes to go up to random people, but if they're wearing a badge, that means they're open to talking. So we've created this as a way to connect all of you. Now, last thing, for me at Pulse, it's always important to keep two different concepts in my head. Number one, you're here as emissaries of your companies. You wanna drive shareholder value. You want your clients to be happy. Number two though, you, you're, you have careers. You wanna do better in your jobs. You wanna advance, you wanna get promoted. You wanna get satisfaction in your jobs. So I wanna talk a little bit just as a closing about the CEO view of customer success. And I actually even live this in my company, right? Cause we're just like you guys. And obviously, I think most of you know, I think most of your CEOs know that at a top level, it's a no-brainer to invest in customer success because retention drives growth. And this is a great study from SaaS Capital recently that showed a direct correlation between the companies that have high gross retention and the companies that grow fast. This is a no-brainer. But the reality is, where does the CEO's job rubber really meet the road? Where do you actually go and make those decisions? It's at the beginning of the year when you open up your Microsoft Excel file and you do your budget. By, by far the least fun part of my year. I hate the budget. Love karaoke, hate the budget. But I have to, you have to figure out as a CEO, where do you put your resources, right? Do you put them into sales? Do you put them into marketing? Do you put them into engineering? Do you put them into sales, right? And a lot of CEOs, historically, all they knew was putting folks into sales. If you wanna grow faster, you hire more salespeople. Maybe you spend some on marketing. It's a little bit like that story, that quote that some of you have you've heard. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? And for a lot of people, a lot of CEOs that I talk to, they've grown up in a world where all they knew was sales. But these CEOs, these CEOs I talk to all the time, hundreds and hundreds of CEOs are seeing radically different math now. And we, we have a white paper on this on our website. 
all about the math of acquisition, which is great. You need new customers, but inevitably you're going to lose money typically on those new customers, right? You have to market to them. You have to pay the sales team. You have sales operations. You have sales engineering You have the sales management. You do the math and even a well-run company is typically going to lose money in that first year on new customers. Whereas if you look at most companies, they spend roughly 15 cents on the dollar on their existing customers, right? Maybe they should spend a little bit more, a little less, but that's massive difference in cash flow. So the CEOs I talk to all the time are saying, how do I double down on customer success, especially as we go into a downturn and we don't have as much capital. So customer success has never been more important to your CEOs. And if you're a CSM, I want you to know that you've never been more important to the people you work with and to your CEOs. One evidence of that is that we have a CEO summit at Pulse this year and we have about 100 people signed up for it. So 100 of your CEOs chose to take half of their day away from the company to learn about customer success. That's pretty awesome. And we actually surveyed you before this event and 500 of you responded and we said, is your team getting more attention from your CEO this year? 95% of you said yes. 95% of you said you're getting more attention. I don't know what percentage of you wanted more attention from your CEO, but 95% of you are getting more attention. So customer success is really important. It's hard, I think, day to day as you're dealing with the escalation emails and the at-risk customers and the people that won't call you back. But as you're dealing with your worries and your, your strife, I hope you can take solace in the idea that a lot of CEOs now recognize that customer success is a bare necessity. So with that, let me turn it back to Dan Steinman for the rest of our agenda.